In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a miniature version of yourself. This one is a really fun and really playful effect. So let's get into it. So in order to create this effect, there are a few things that you need to pay close attention to. First of all, we're going to capture the footage of you on a blue or a green screen. And if you're going to be sitting down like you are in my example, then you need to find an object that is either blue or green. So in my example, you can see I'm sitting on a blue suitcase and I'm paying close attention to the black zips and the black handles and trying to cover those up as much as possible. However, though, if you don't have a green or a blue object like a suitcase, then you can just grab a chair without the back. So grab a stool, throw some green cloth, so maybe a green t-shirt or a blue t-shirt over this to cover that up to make a makeshift green screen. And then you just want to place your camera onto a tripod and then film the shot. But it's also worth noting that when you're filming the shot, you want to pay attention to the angle. So if I was to film my green screen footage at a low angle, so the camera is lower than me, and then the footage that I want to put this onto, the camera was at a higher angle, these two perspectives wouldn't match. So you need to understand where you're going to be placing this person and what type of angle the shot is filmed from. So as you can see in my example, the camera is just below eye line. I'm slightly looking up. So this means when I grab my footage of my scene, you'll notice that it is a slightly lower angle. And of course, again, this second clip is filmed on a tripod to make these two marry up with each other. And of course, as well, if you can pay attention to the light in the scene and try and match the light of the green screen footage to the footage of the clean plate, then that's really going to help to blend these two worlds. So in your green screen footage, if you have light on this side, you want to make sure that in the footage of the clean plate, there is light coming in from that angle so that it matches and there's a level of consistency. So once you've got that green screen footage of you sat on an object or standing there, and then you've got footage of an area, so your clean plate, so this could be the arm of a sofa, a chair, a tabletop. Once you've got that, you can drop this into Adobe After Effects and we can pop these two clips together in the edit. So as you can see, we are now inside of Adobe After Effects and we've got our two video clips lined up. So this first clip here is me sat on a blue screen, sat on a blue suitcase. And then the second clip is my clean plate. So I'm going to put myself onto this pink exercise block here. So the first step is to actually just go ahead and remove the blue from this frame. So in order to do that, I'm going to go into effects and preset and search for key lights. We'll drop that onto the footage layer. We'll go into screen color, select the eyedropper tool and select the blue. And that should get rid of the blue or do a decent job at getting rid of the blue. Then we'll go into final result and select status. And the objective here is to turn the blue screen black and everything else as white as possible. So I'm just going to begin by increasing the screen gain. That's pretty good. I'm going to pull the screen balance around. We'll pull that down a touch. That's not quite doing what I need it to do. So I'm going to go into screen matte and I'm going to play with clip black. So I'll pull that up. I'll pull the clip white down and that does help to turn the gray into green, which is better, but it's not quite perfect. So I'll go to final result and see where we're at. So you can see there is a little bit of imperfections here. So I'm just going to adjust the screen balance, pull that down. And that is now looking a bit healthier. Of course, it's not perfect, but that will do for now. So now at this moment in time, I'm just going to draw a mask around the top of the green screen or the top of the blue screen, should I say. And then I'm just going to draw down to the bottom of the frame. I'm aware I can see the carpet, but I'm going to rotoscope that out later on. And now, as you can see, we've got this shot of me. The blue screen is completely removed. And now I can roughly position myself onto this block. So I'm just going to start by scaling this down and just place myself onto this block here. And as you can see, that's a pretty decent starting point. Of course, though, as you can see, we can see the ground here. And unfortunately, that's not great. That's not what we want here. So I'm just going to go into the Roto Brush layer. So we'll go Roto Brush tool, double click on this layer. Then I'm just going to zoom out to the bottom part of the frame so you can see my feet here. Then we'll select back onto that Roto Brush icon. And you want to go into Window and make sure Brushes is enabled. And this means you can pull the size of this Roto Brush down. And the goal here is to just paint with inside your feet and your legs. So because you can see my legs and my feet overlapping onto the carpet, we're going to want to rotoscope those. So we'll just paint the roto brush over my legs and my feet. 
And if it happens to go over, then just hold option and paint over that part to remove that part. But you want to get your feet and legs into this. And then once you're happy with that, you can just press play. I've made a slight error though. You can see my cursor is 16 frames in. So I'm just going to remove the roto brush for now. I'll go back to the very beginning and then I'll just paint back over myself again. So I'm just going to go through that process one more time. And as you can see, that's pretty good. So we can just press play and we can just let Adobe After Effects analyze forward. And if for any reason there's any imperfections, so on one frame, the roto brush changes and it catches a different part of the frame that you don't want to include, then just stop the roto brush, go back in time and then make the correction. But as you can see, because there's not a lot of movement and because my legs and my socks are a completely different color to the floor, there's a nice color contrast there. So the rotor brush is having an easy job at keeping up and figuring out what is me and what is the floor. So if your computer is doing a great job at analyzing the scene like mine is, then you can just keep an eye on it, but just let it do its thing. And there you go. Once the rotor brush has finished analyzing this, you just want to go through, double check that it's done a good job. And if you're happy with the job that it's done, you can go back to your composition and you'll notice your legs are now perfectly chopped out and removed from the scene. But the problem is it's removed everything else that we didn't want to remove. So I'm just going to duplicate that layer. We'll go to the bottom layer and delete the roto brush. And then on this bottom layer, I'm just going to adjust the mask and get rid of my legs. So we'll just make the bottom of the edge here. And that means that our legs and our body are now perfectly removed from this scene. So I'm just going to select both of those layers pre-compose these into their own layer and we'll call them mini Chris. And now I've got this mini version of myself on its own layer. Of course, because the roto brush is done on one of those layers, there is a little bit of time every time you move the cursor. So it does have to render this shot back out every single time, which is a little bit inconvenient. So as you can see so far, we've done a really good job at removing me from the blue screen and rotoing out the legs. So this kind of feels like this character lives in this scene, but in order to make it feel like the character is living in the scene even more, we want to add some shadow in because at the moment there's no interaction between myself and the scene. So I'm just going to go layer new solid. We'll make this black. Press OK. We'll just drop this underneath the mini Chris layer for now. We'll turn off the shadow layer and then we'll just select the shadow layer go up to the pen tool and we're just going to draw a rough outline around the legs like this does it need to be perfect just very rough then we'll just nudge this over to the left so if you press m on the keyboard select mask and move everything over you can see that is going to just nudge over then we'll turn that layer back on and then from there we're just going to go into the mask go into mask feather, we'll increase the mask feather all the way up to around 60, 70, just to the point where it becomes a soft shadow. And then we'll go to opacity and we'll pull this down. Now, if you notice, I've got windows over on the right of frame. So the lights coming in from the right, so the shadows would be on the left. So just be very aware of that. So you might have to nudge the whole mask over to the left a little bit to make that feel convincing. So this is before and this is off. It's just added a little bit of something into the scene and it's made this character feel a bit more connected. Of course, as well, you can add the shadow from up here, down here as well. So you could extend this to go all the way up here and we could add a shape around here so we can add the shadow in. It doesn't need to be perfect, but just a rough shadow is just going to help to solidify this character into the scene. But as you can see, the light is coming in from here. The light is hitting me there, which is great. We've got the shadow on this left side of the face because that is the darker side of the room. And because of that, it feels like this character now belongs in this scene. So all we need to do now is to just match these two layers up next to each other. So in order to do that, I'm just going to go in to this option down here and select red. And this is loading up the properties for the red channel. So if we go into curves, drop curves onto mini Chris and we'll select the red channel. What we want to do here is we want to match the highlights, the midtones and the shadows of this layer to this layer or from the background layer to this layer. So as you can see, if we look at the highlights, so the highlights are the brighter part of the frame. So this is my highlight and this is the highlight in the frame. Do they match? If not, do I need to make that lighter or do I need to make that darker? 
I think I'm going to make that a touch lighter. Then if you look at the midtones, which is the back wall, this would be my midtone. Do I need to adjust that? So is that too dark or is that too light? That's about right there. And then if you look at the shadow, so my shorts in the back of the shot and then here, do I need to make them lighter or darker? I think a little bit darker would do. Then we can move on to the green channel and you want to change the view down here to green. And we'll do the same process. So look at our highlights. It looks like the highlights in the back of the shot are brighter than my highlights. So let's pull the highlights up here, make them a bit brighter. The midtones are a little bit too bright in this. So let's pull the midtones down a touch. And then if you look at the shadows, the dark part, my shadows are too dark. So let's pull those up a bit to match. So this would be the shadow down here and this is a shadow here. By the way, if you don't know how curves work, I should have explained. The top right of the curve is your highlights, the bottom left are your shadows, and the middle is your midtones. So the highlights are your bright parts, the shadows are your dark parts. And if you pull a point to the top left corner, it becomes brighter. If you pull it towards the bottom right corner, it becomes darker. So if I pull this towards the bottom right, it goes darker. But if I pull it towards the top left, it goes lighter. And we're trying to balance the foreground and the background so that they match. So the green channel is now matching. We'll go to the blue channel on both. And you can see the blue is kind of close. The highlights need to be brought up just a little bit. So we'll bring these up a touch. The midtones are about right, maybe. But the shadows are probably a little bit too dark. So let's just pull those shadows up a touch. And now when we go back to RGB and we go back to RGB here, you should notice these scenes now match each other a lot better. So this was before and this is after. So let's zoom out. Let's see. This is before. This is after. You can see these two shots now feel like they live a little bit closer together. Of course, I'd probably say I've slightly overdone that. So what I'm going to do is just copy this layer, delete curves from that top layer, and then we'll just go to the opacity and pull the opacity down probably to about 50% to reduce that effect. So this was it all the way there and this is it slightly reduced. You can see that now feels like it's part of the scene. And of course as well, static tripod shots, they give VFX and visual effects away. Almost subconsciously when you see them, you know, all oh, that could be fake because the camera's not moving. So they've obviously done something. So if we just highlight everything in the frame, right click and select pre-compose, we can then go into position. So we'll press P on the keyboard, hold Option if you're on Mac. If you're on Windows, I'll find the button for you. Press the stopwatch icon and we'll type wiggle, open bracket, 2, comma, 10, and then click out of the expression window rather than pressing enter. And this is going to add a little bit of basic handheld camera movements. As you can see, if that's not enough, though, then feel free to increase these numbers. So we'll go three and 20. That might be a bit too much. So let's pull that back down to two and 15. And that's now better. So we can just go into effects and preset search for motion tile. Drop that onto this layer. We'll go output width 300, output height 300, and then we can mirror edges. And that's just going to fill in the edges of the frame. So if you see before, we're getting black parts of the frame appearing in the top of the frame. But if we turn that back on, it's going to mirror and fill those edges. And there you go. Once you render this out and you play this back, you'll notice you'll have this really awesome miniature version of yourself in your footage. And there you go. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.